So I'm really happy to be able to introduce to the show um, Dave Cusack, the vice president of uh, Berkeley School of Music, and um, he takes care of the uh, berkeleymusic.com site as well. And it's the first day at Medem, uh, so really busy for everyone. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Great to meet you. Uh, so first of all, let's start with the... Uh, you know the work that you do at Berkeley. You know you, you've been involved in the creation, distribution, and uh, pr promotion of technological innovation in uh, uh, music for you know a number of years. <laughs> and you, you started out by you know creating synthesizers, and then you've uh, gone on to uh, co-invent MIDI and do a whole host of other stuff, uh, which is really amazing. And then you ended up uh, working at Berkeley. So what drove you to joining Berkeley, and uh, what's the inspiration in that? Well, Berkeley is a very entrepreneurial and innovative uh, school and uh, quite interested in the future of the music industry and where it's headed. Uh, so I got involved with Berkeley about 10 years ago, and I had an idea for a musician's network, an online network, and I proposed this to Berkeley, and they said, that's, that's great, Dave, great idea, uh, maybe a little early, uh, but why don't we start with creating an online school? As we all know, the business was going digital, so we thought, well, let's take the school digital. And if if music is going online, let's take the school online, and then we can, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk and put our money where our, where our mouth is, so to speak. So we created BerkeleyMusic.com uh, as an online music school to teach everything that is taught at Berkeley, which is every subject relevant to music, production, songwriting, theory, harmony, uh, music business, performance on any instrument, uh, per, you know, building a band, having a career, being a producer, and, and so on. So we've be begun to map that curriculum online, and we now teach uh, over 130 different courses and programs online. We're teaching to students literally all over the world in more than 90 countries. Uh, we've reached about 30,000 students online uh, over the past 10 years, and the program is, is very dynamic, and, and uh, we've had the opportunity as a result of inventing this online school of recreating the curriculum where it made sense. So in a lot of the technical courses, uh, all the production courses, for example, and certainly the business courses. We've had a chance to rewrite what does it mean to uh, you know, produce music with digital tools uh, on the production side, how to use uh, Ableton Live and Reason and Sonar and all of the Pro Tools, all of the current key digital technologies, all the plugins. So that uh, those production courses are very, very fresh. On the business side, we've also had a chance to look at where is the business going as opposed to wh what has it been, uh, and how do you create a, a business opportunity for yourself as an as a entrepreneur, as a musician, a student, a producer, you know, future producer. So many of those uh, business courses are, are, again, quite fresh about how do you create a business yourself, how do you be an entrepreneur? How do you run a company? How do you build a, a publishing business? How do you build a uh, production company, for example? How do you take yourself to market using modern tools like Topspin and Nimbit and Reverb Nation and many, many others? So it's, uh, it's been uh, quite a challenge to build this school, but it's uh, growing significantly, and we're reaching people who wouldn't normally have the opportunity to come to Berkeley through the through the internet? And uh, it's a really interesting challenge because, you know, on the instrumental side, you know, the more traditional uh, Berkeley uh, curriculum, it's easier, I guess, to um, transmit that information because uh, you know. Th th the music is the music but in terms of the business side of things uh, then you must get students from uh, a number of different countries where things work differently uh, that may have to work with different situations different business models does that like uh, improve your own insight of how things work on a worldwide basis absolutely that's a great question um, we've discovered that there are many music markets and there are many approaches to the music industry and some countries are quite far ahead and of others, and some are, are still 
you know, we would consider behind in, in many regards. But in some cases, those are, are vibrant businesses. Uh, so, yeah, having a, having a global audience in the, in the room, in the virtual room that we run, uh, brings many different perspectives. And we take that and re-engineer the courses as we go forward and, and learn from the students, uh, particularly in the business area and particularly in the production area because it's changing every day. So one approach you know, may work in one territory and may not work in another, but quite often it's more of a fusion of things that people can try, and we've learned quite a bit from our students. And um, it must be interesting to see how the expectations change for the students in this digital age, uh, both on the offline and on the online for Berkeley uh, because you know the digital revolution has meant that you know you can't really aspire to be signed anymore there's a whole other way of getting around uh, making a living out of the music business and partially that was uh, you know a reason why Berkeley was there because they were teaching people to give them professional tools so that they could become professional musicians uh, but on the other side there must have still been a lot of students that were hoping to go down that you know well-trodden path of the record label. Uh, how are they coping with this shift, and uh, do you see a change in the expectation that they have in getting into the music industry? Another great question. Um, I would break it into two groups. We see the traditional approach in many students. No matter what we, what we tell them or how, how long they train and study with us, at the end of the day, they're still looking to be signed. They're still looking for uh, support and someone to kind of take care of them and, and help them in their career. And I would say that's about half the population. On the other hand, uh, the other half is really very innovative and fearless, not worried about, oh, okay, I can't get signed or I can't get a publishing deal or you know, I've got to prove myself first. doesn't bother them at all. Uh, we have a lot of students, particularly in the online school, who are actively working in companies, starting businesses, starting management companies, production companies, publishing companies, blends of different things depending on what their perspective and point of view is. And they're, uh, they're not concerned at all, so they take what we're offering uh, and, and apply it to their own situation. So, again, we learn from them, but quite often people develop business plans in the courses and then take those plans literally into the market while they're taking the courses and start their companies. And naturally, Boston is also home to one of the most uh, innovative uh, digital music companies out there, which is the Econest. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Econest, and how do you see them and that field of the digital music industry going forward? I think that's a fascinating company and uh, a great example of opening up your model and, and kind of letting it go and letting people play with the data and, and what they've created and what they've collected and then uh, see what comes of that. So I, I believe music recommendation, music discovery is perhaps the most important business opportunity uh, and we've not really seen great examples of that. So I think uh, Econest is building the infrastructure to allow that to happen. And uh, I'm very, very interested in that area. I think discovering and accessing music is more important and will be more important in the future than uh, almost any other activity in marketing, for sure. And... Um on top of the berkeleymusic.com site, there's also the Berkeley Music Network. So what's the different difference between the uh, two initiatives, and how does the Berkeley Music Network work? We discovered that we had an online community as a result of creating the online school, and this was my original vision of a musician's network where professionals could interact with one another and gain the tools and services and products that they required and that they could also collaborate on projects together. So the network was really at the core of the idea from the start. And after we built the online school, we discovered we literally had tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of musicians interacting online. So we decided we would formalize that. And we're in the process now of, of relaunching the network as a separate domain uh, with a talent pool that people could search. Uh, 
you could promote yourself in that talent pool uh, with very uh, robust profiles, uh, showcasing your music, your videos, your reviews, your band schedule, uh, whatever it is that you're about or your company, your products and your services. We're also uh, putting together a job board aggregating all the jobs from around the world that are relevant to music and making those available to people in the network. We're also working on a marketplace where we're partnering with companies, uh, again, around the world that provide products and services that professional musicians would want to use and negotiating uh, discounts and special offers for our community. Uh, so that will, this spring, that uh, network will formally launch, and uh, I think it will be the really a very unique only place where uh, professional musicians and producers and engineers and business people can collaborate and it's a very very focused set of features to help them pursue their career so we're very very excited about that and uh, in terms of uh, Boston still um, you you know another spawn of Berkeley is uh, really um, Sonic Beds because uh, it came out of the founder actually came to Berkeley and uh, so what do you think about uh, Sonic Beds as a tool for uh, musicians to be able to get gigs both in the United States and abroad and is this something that you see your community also using uh, for uh, getting gigs where they are Uh, yes, certainly Sonic Bids is a partner in our network, will be one of uh, many, many partners in the network. I, I think that their model is, uh, I'm not sure how relevant going forward that model is going to be, because it's, it's, it's becoming a much more fragmented market, less control, less power in the, prom in the promoters than there were in the past. Uh, and I think because of the Internet and because of the communication tools that we have, that finding opportunities and finding gigs these days and moving forward are quite different than they were uh, five years ago or so. So I think there's a place for that, but I, I, I also believe that there are many, many other ways that people are going to find opportunities and create them for, for themselves. Uh, so I'm anxious to see how that plays out. And uh, one last question is about uh, the U.S. and the state of uh, uh, both music licensing and legislation. Uh, we, we're having a there is a bill that is they're trying to pass through Senate at the moment that is going, att attempting somehow to regulate uh, traffic on the internet in terms of uh, regulating piracy, but it's, it's thought by many to be far overreaching in its attempt. Uh, so, what do you think about uh, legislation attempts uh, in the U.S. to control piracy and? Thus, uh, try and help the music industry, uh, you know, with its own uh, money generating flow. I'm actually quite surprised that the kind of pirated music sites, illegal music sites, the file sharing services have begun to fall off. I'm, I'm surprised by that. Uh, so I, I do think some of the legislative moves and the uh, lawsuits that have uh, gone down in the last seven or eight years have certainly had an effect. Uh, I would encourage and do encourage our, our congressmen and women and uh, people in positions of power to not uh, work so much about protecting the content and protecting the business, but to encourage a more global licensing approach so that it's easier to acquire a license uh, globally, compulsory license if possible, a collective license if possible. I think that that will, would make a, a much stronger statement towards supporting the industry and making uh, a healthy industry going forward than trying to protect the way it was. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to some sort of a collective license. I think we're still many years away. I thought it would happen by now, but uh, I think it will eventually happen. It needs to happen. If you can't license music on a global basis quickly and easily and, and inexpensively moving forward, uh, I'm not sure what kind of a music industry we're really going to have. Well, it was absolutely a pleasure talking to you. And uh, what are your contacts for um, your blog? Is it future music, futureofmusic.com? Futureofmusicbook.com. Okay, the futureofmusicbook.com. So you can visit there, and uh, Dave has got his blog, and you can read up on all the latest news, uh, which are edited not only by Dave, but also by uh, a few other people. Many others, yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you.